Good morning, this is August 9th, 2020. Welcome to our online service for Knox and Ephraim Scott Presbyterian Church in Bedeck, Cape Breton. My name is Reverend Brian McLeod. Welcome to our service. May God bless you. Our call to worship today is from Philippians chapter 2. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion, symphony, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but humility regard others as better than ourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue to pray. Let's pray a prayer of admiration. O Lord, be gracious to us. Look upon your people of mercy. Forgive our sin. Bring us back again, as you have done before. Speak your word to us, a word of peace, to those who follow faithfully. For we know, without doubt, that your salvation is near. Your glory fills this place. Amen. We can do the pray, our prayer confession. We come seeking God in mighty earthquakes. We come listening for God in resounding thunder. We come re-expecting God in sweeping victories. Yet God is found in baby's touch. Yet God speaks in songs. Yet God is found in the least of these. Save us, O God, from our aimless wandering. Save us, O God, from our idols. Save us, O God, from our self-induced chaos. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Here's our assurance of pardon. Here's the good news of God's love for us. Not in the earthquake, not in the storms, not in the mighty deeds, but in the silence, in the gentle touch, in the quiet rain. God says again, You are my beloved. I love you. Amen. Our mission moment today is building healthy communities. And it's actually International Day of World Indigenous People. In Guatemala, 30-year-old Martina Christian did know what having a clean kitchen and a balanced diet had to do with her son's development and family's health. But an unclean kitchen meant that Marta's family could be exposed to diseases such as diarrhea and infect intestinal infections. But Presbyterian World Service Development supported workshops empowering indigenous communities like Marta to can improve their diets and health by sharing knowledge, but cleanness, and how to prepare the nutritious food they are growing. The project have given Martha and the women in her community a sense of improved self-esteem. They now use the skills they have learned in their everyday lives, boasting their confidence and proven their family's overall health. Amen. Our first reading today is from Psalm 105. I'm reading the first 11 verses. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look at the Lord and strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done. His miracles and judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments, judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham. The oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you, I will give the land of Canaan as a portion you'll inherit. Amen. And if you have a Bible in front of you, please turn to 1 Kings chapter 19, reading verse 9 to 18. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 to 18. There he went into the cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very serious for the Lord God Almighty. 
The Israelites have rejected your covenant, tore down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After wind, there were earthquakes, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After fire came a gentle whisper. When Eliza heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. Israelites have rejected your covenant, tore down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came. Go back to the desert of Damascus. When we get there, anoint Hazel, king over Aram. Anoint Hajua, son of Nisha, king over Israel. Anoint Elijah, son of Sephat. For Mabel Malath to succeed to his prophet. Jehu will put to death anyone who escaped the sword of Hazel. Elijah will put to death anyone who escapes the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 Israel, all those whose knees have now bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. Amen. I invite you again turn to your Bible for Romans chapter 10, verses 5 to 10. Hear God's word. Moses writes this about the righteous. That is by law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteous that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven or who will descend into the deep. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is your mouth and your heart. That is the message concerning the faith that we proclaim. If you declare your mouth, Jesus the Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and you are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all. And richly blesses all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. How then can they tell, call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without something preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen. And finally, our gospel reaching today is from Gospel Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. So I invite you to turn to your Bible. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by the boat privately to the solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. And Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have only five loaves and bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. And then he gave to them the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the people. <clears throat> they were all ate and were satisfied. And Zeus picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. Amen.
Gracious Father, <clears throat> may these words be acceptable to you in your gracious name. Amen. Today I'm going to talk about is the miracles of Jesus. A minister delivered a sermon in 10 minutes one Sunday morning, which was about half the usual length of his sermons. He explained, I regret to inform you that my dog, who was very fond of eating paper, ate the portion of my sermon which I was unable to deliver this morning. After the service, a visitor from the church shook hands with the preacher and said, Reverend, if that dog of yours has any puppies, I want to give one of them to my minister. So have you ever experienced a miracle in life? Friends and family who love you, a job came your way when you most needed it. A phone call from an old friend when you were feeling blue. Some of you may think these are not miracles, but I disagree with you. There is one miracle each of us have and will experience. That is the love of God. The miracle knows no time or space. It is without limitations or boundaries. Dwight Nelson recently told a true story about a pastor. He had a small little kitten that climbed up a tree in his backyard, then was afraid to come down. The pastor coaxed, offered warm milk, everything. The kitty would not come down. The tree was not sturdy enough to climb. So the pastor decided that he tied a rope to his car and drove away so the tree would bend down. He could then reach up and grasp the kitten. He did all this, keeping out, getting out to check. Then figured if he went just a little bit farther, just a little bit farther, the tree would be bent sufficiently for him to reach the kitten. But as he moved a little farther, the rope broke. The tree went bong! And the kitten instantly sailed through the air, out of sight. The pastor felt so, so bad. He walked all over the neighborhood, everywhere, asking people if seen a little kitten. No, nobody had seen the kitten. So he got down on his knees and he prayed, Lord, I just commit this kitten to your keeping. And then went about his business. A few days later, he was at the grocery store. He met Melissa Jefferson, one of his church members. He happened to look into her shopping cart, and he was amazed to see cat food. Known she hated cats, he asked her, Why are you buying cat food when you hate cats so much? She replied, You won't believe this, and told him how her little girl, Megan, had been begging for her for a cat, but she kept refusing. Then a few days before, the girl had begged again. And so my mom finally told her, little girl, well, if God gives you a cat from heaven, I'll let you keep it. You can guess the rest. She told the pastor, I watched my little girl go out in the yard, get on her knees and ask God for a kitty cat. And really, pastor, you won't believe this. I saw it with my own eyes. A kitten suddenly came flying out of the blue sky with his paw spread out and landed right in front of her. We have many books written from this subject, but miracles. We have theological, spiritual, and fiction, and non-fiction books. One such book that got a lot of attention was the book called Miracles from Heaven. The abridged version of the book is about a 10-year-old girl named Anna, who wakes one night in great pain. Anna and her mom goes to numerous doctors who could not explain why this young girl was so sick. During this time, the family faith is tested to the limit. Christy, the mother, finally finds a pediatrician in the hospital that is able to diagnose. Anna, with an abdominal obstruction, he tells them he must operate immediately or she will die. After emergency surgery is performed, the doctor explains that Anna has been left with pseudo-obstruction motley disorder, and she's unable able to eat. So feeding tubes are needed for nutrition. 
Dr. Nudigo had a last minute opening. A banana is subsequently examined at Boston Children's Hospital. The extent of her chronic illness is found. She then goes through extensive treatment time after time. During this ordeal, Anne and her mother befriend a local Massachusetts resident named Angela Bradford. We know her as Queen Latifah, as well as Ben, Wayne Perry, in the movie, and his daughter Haley, who also has cancer. On December 29, 2011, Anna, along with her bigger sister Abby, climbed up to a very high branch of an old cotton tree. While they are on that branch, it begins to break. Anna goes to the trunk for safety, whereupon stepping on it, she falls in a hole to the base of the tree. When Christy finds out what has happened, she desperately calls her husband Kevin. That was the fire department. Anna is then rescued by firefighters, who warns Christy to expect the worst by saying that nobody could fall 30 feet without sustaining a serious injury. Broken bones are paralysis. Once out, Anna is airlifted to a hospital where a battery tests are run on her, and all her tests come back negative, other than a minor concussion. Anna is uninjured. Sometime after the fall, Anna seems to no longer be affected by her illness. And when Christy and Anna go to the appointment with Dr. Nuko, he tells Christy that Anna is miraculously cured. Anna then recounts with her parents the experience she had during the fall. She describes how her soul left her body during the fall. And God promised that she would be cured of her illness upon her return to earth. At church, Christy shares the story of how God miraculously healed her daughter with his love. As Christy finished her speech, one of the congregation protests, stating that he does not believe Christy. She's a liar. Ben, who has traveled from Boston upon hearing the story about Anna, believes her and tells her that Haley died peacefully because Anna gave her faith when the hospital making Anna cry because Haley was her best friend. So we asked today, what is a miracle? It is an extraordinary event that is attributed to the divine presence. It's something that is very remarkable, that happens and is often welcome. It's something that we cannot explain. It's happened. It is divine intervention. A miracle is a sign from the Lord to convince us to believe in the power and presence of God. Jesus is a miracle as the Word became flesh and lived among us. Today, from the Gospel reading, we see Jesus feeds the 5,000 men plus women and children. This passage shows up in all four Gospels. So, why is this thing so important? Why so important? Christ's miracle of feeding the 5,000 is unique in that it's only one of all, is one, only one that is in all four gospel writers mention. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Mark 6, 30 to 44. Luke 9, 10 to 17. John 6, 1 to 14. It's so important. It illustrates Jesus' authority over nature. His divine intervention on behalf of others, showing that he is concerned about both humans' physical and spiritual needs. So again, it illustrates Jesus' authority over nature and his divine intervention on behalf of others, showing that he is concerned about both human, physical, and spiritual needs. When we see Jesus demonstrating his authority over nature, and his divine mediation on behalf of others. Jesus is concerned about the physical and non-physical needs of all people who were there. Here we see the huge crowd that came to listen to Jesus. Jesus is moved by this show of great faith. He is tired from teaching and healing people. But when the evening comes, he knows that the crowd is tired and hungry too. Jesus knows he must feed these people. 
But then you see disciples had not a thought. Let's disband this big crowd. Let them find their own lodging and food. Don't worry about it. They can do it on their own. But see, Jesus tested his disciples in one way they failed. They believed that they did not have enough supplies to feed the crowd. The disciples need to learn that true faith must rely on divine resources, not physical and material ones. The faith must rely on divine resources. And Andrew tells Jesus, there's a lad here who has 5,000 barley, five barley loaves and two fish. Not 5,000. Yet because of their lack of faith, disciples cannot see any possibility of feeding the great multitude with their scarce funds and scanty of food on hand. But however, faith enables us to see that with God, all things are possible. That with God, all things are possible. The Bible is a brilliant act of creative power. The Mount, the miracle. The Mount of human reasoning can reduce this miracle to a natural phenomenon. I should have said, no amount of human reason can reduce this miracle to a natural phenomenon. Indeed, complete understanding of the miracle is beyond human understanding. By an act of his own creative power, Jesus revealed proof of his deity to thousands. Even the Bible Belt, coroners don't use the word miracle lightly. But Holmes County, Mississippi, coroner Dexter Howard had no qualms using the word for the resurrection, as it were, of Walter Williams. Howard received this call from Williams' hospice nurse, who told him that the 70-year-old man had passed away. Howard drove to Williams' home to collect the body for funeral preparations. He checked William's pulse at 9 p.m. and pronounced him dead. There was no pulse. He was lifeless, Howard said. He was dead. The coroner completed his paperwork, placed Williams in a body bag, and transported him back to the funeral home. There's something strange happened. The body bag moved. Yes, the body bag moved. We got him in the embalming room, and we noticed his legs began to move, like kicking, Harris said. He also began to do a little, do a little breathing. Paramer paramedics arrived, hooked Williams up to the monitors. Sure enough, he had a heartbeat. So they transported him to the Holmes County Hospital and clinics. Howard is now is an elected official and not a doctor. More than 1,500 counties in the United States elect coroners, and most don't require medical degrees. Howard was absolutely certain Williams was dead. The only reason explanation he could think of, Howard said, is that Williams' defibrillator imp implanted beneath the skin of his chest jump-started his heart after he was placed in the body bag. Could have kicked him in, started his heart back, Howard said. But you know, the bottom line is it's a miracle. Overjoyed, family members are thanking God for saving the life of this longtime farmer they called Snowball. You see, Jesus' miracle provided them an opportunity to serve him while teaching us lessons in responsible service. Though God does not need us, he gives us a privilege and blessing to be involved in his service. Some people do not wish to be encumbered by duty at church. But there's a wrong perspective of service. God provides opportunities to serve so that we might experience great blessing. Amen. Let's bow our head in prayer for our prayer of dedication. We bring you only what is yours, Creator God, that you might use this offering and the giver for the building up of your kingdom and the glory of your name. Amen. Again, let us bow our head for our prayer of thanksgiving and Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. God of all people, 
Your love and grace sustains the world, all who live in it. Only fools you set up walls between people, you tear them down and draw us into one family, united in Christ and in compassion. The pandemic has filled so many nations and neighbors with turmoil and fear. So we come before you with prayers for the world you love. Astonishing God, you surprise us. You come to us in unforeseen circumstances and unexpected people. We give you thanks for all the healers and heroes who step forward during this pandemic. Surprise us with kindness and courage. We pray for all who are still face upheaval and uncertainty because of COVID-19. Call out leaders with wisdom and imagination to address the fear and change we are facing. And fill our hearts with compassion and understanding for the most fearful. God of peace, you reassure us. You remind us not to be afraid when troubles arise. You pray for all people who live in precarious situations, not related to the pandemic. Assure them that they are not forgotten. We pray for those who struggle with illness, grief, or depression. May they know your peace and strength. Equip us to reach out in every way we can do to embody your love in our words and actions. God, I hope you challenge us. You come to us in the midst of trouble and invite us to stand for justice and work for truth. We pray for all, all those people crying out for fair treatment, working against racism, discrimination, telling painful stories of their lives, open our hearts with understanding, and motivate us to act for change. We pray for those who resist the stories of injustice and define inequality, open their minds to the truths they deny and show them new possibilities for relationships that bridge divides. Send your spirit to work in our communities to create mutual respect and new ways to live as neighbors. And Father, in the sounds of our hearts, hear our prayers to you now. Gracious Father, we pray for the Christian church around the world. We pray for our Church of Knox and our sister church of Ephraim Scott. We pray for all the pastors and ministers around this area. Today we especially remember Reverend Mary Jo Harrison, Reverend Eden Harrison, Pastor Phil McCormick, Deacon Wally Ivney, Reverend Lou Ehaus, Reverend Cameron Brett, Reverend Glenn Davies, Reverend Corey Stewart, Reverend Peter McDonald. Father, just be with them, protect them, and let them continue to preach the good news of your gospel. Father, we pray for the EHS, the RCMP, Royal Canadian Armed Forces, our volunteer fire department, McLeod House, Alderwood, Hospital, and frontline workers. And continue to pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. Our blessing gain comes from the book of Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others is better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace. Never be afraid. God will go with you each hour every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. No, he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from above. Go now in peace and faith and love. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good week.